is and double equal are two ways in Python in which we can compare and check for equality between two variables. And you probably saw each used a multitude of times but never really understood their differences and when to actually use each in your code. Well, in this video, we'll understand what each of these operators actually do and highlight their differences, look into some important details to be very prudent about, and finally, provide some realistic scenarios and recommendations on when to use each of these operators. The first thing every Python developer has to understand is that variables in Python are pointers. Once you understand this, the rest of this video becomes much smoother to tackle. I actually made a pretty complete video on the subject explaining what is a variable in Python and the difference between mutable and immutable objects. I would highly recommend you watch this video right after this one, but for now, just keep in mind that whenever a variable is defined in Python, a new object is created in memory, and then this variable will now contain the address of this object in memory. Let's also define another variable b and set it equal to the same list 1, 2, 3. Whenever we use the double equal comparison operator, what we're actually comparing between any two variables is whether or not the values of the objects they are pointing to are equivalent or not. So here, the object a is pointing to contains the list 1, 2, 3, and the object b is pointing to also contains the same exact value. So a equal equal b should return true, and we can verify that with this print. Naturally, if we set the first element of a to 10, the equal equal comparison will now return the value false. Now what about the is operator? Well, the operator is doesn't really look into the value of the objects, all it does is check whether two variables are actually pointing to the same exact object in memory or not. Here we can clearly see that a and b are pointing to completely different objects in memory, so when we print out a is b, as expected, this would return false. Even if we revert a back to its original value with 1 as its first element, this doesn't really matter as the is operator will still return false. Because as I mentioned, it doesn't care at all about the values of the objects, all it cares about is whether two variables are pointing to the same address in memory or not. Here, a and b are two completely unrelated variables defined independently from one another. And by the way, we can actually print the address to which each variable is pointing to in Python using the built-in function id, which takes as input a variable and returns the variable's identity, which is the memory address it points to. Printing both the id of a and b confirms to us that a and b actually point to different objects in memory, despite them having the same value. So now, a natural question that arises is, when would the is operator actually return true? Well, there are many scenarios where this can happen, let me go over the most basic one now, and we'll go over another much more common scenario when we get to my recommendations on when to use each of these operators later in the video. First off, and the most basic scenario is whenever we set a variable equal to another variable. Say here we keep a as is and we'll set b equal to a. Whenever we set a variable equal to another variable and regardless of what the first variable contains, either be it integers, lists, or a custom class, this will result in having the new variable point to the same exact object in memory as our first variable. So here we can see how a and b are pointing to the same object in memory and we can in fact verify that by first printing both of their IDs, then printing a is b and surely enough we can see how both share the same id and the is operator returns true. Now you might be thinking to yourself, if a is b returns true, then surely a equal equal b will also return true, right? I mean, if a is b, this means that both are pointing to the same object in memory, and surely the value of an object is equivalent to itself, right? Well, that's how it should be, and you can rest assured that this is in fact the case for almost all built-in data types in Python, such as strings, lists, tuples, and so on. However, this might not always be the case with custom classes. Here, I've defined a very simple class user containing a single attribute name. I will define a equal to user of Joseph and set b equal to a. As I've explained earlier, whenever we set b equal to a, this will result in having b pointing to the same exact object a is pointing to. This can be verified by printing a is b and surely enough this returns true. 
But now when I print out A equal equal B, get ready for it, we will get a false output. Why is that? Well, because the equal equal operator is an operator that can be overridden in Python, meaning that any class can have its own implementation, its own criteria in order to consider two objects as being equivalent or equal. This can be done by defining our own Donda EQ Donda method that takes as input two things, self and the other thing we're comparing ourselves to. And here, just like in any other function, developers can write whatever condition or code they want. So here I simply return false every time a comparison is made just to prove the point. Logic says that in our scenario, we should compare the user's names. If they match, then the equality should return true, otherwise false is returned. And that's what any reasonable developer would do. In fact, in the official Python documentation, it is stated that equality comparison should be reflexive. In other words, identical objects should compare equal. So keep in mind that the behavior of the is operator is always the same. Nothing can change or override that. It will always compare IDs of variables. Whereas the equality operator can be overridden user defined and thus have unpredictable behavior for custom classes. There's one last thing I want to quickly mention before going over my recommendations on when to use each operator. Let's take a look at this simple example where we're defining two variables a and b, setting each equal to Joseph, then printing the value returned by a equal equal b and a is b. Given everything we learned so far, what would you guess the output here to be? Well, given that a and b contain the same value, the equality comparison should return true. And as a and b are defined independently, the identity comparison should return false, right? But running this code, we get true returned by both comparisons. And that's something you should be very cautious about. Python interpreters can, if they wish to, implement a concept called interning, which, following Wikipedia's definition, is reusing objects of equal value on demand instead of creating new objects. In Python, this is something applicable only for immutable objects such as integers and strings. What this means is that Python here saw the value Joseph assigned to a, then the same value assigned to b. Instead of recreating a copy of the same string, and for optimization purposes, Python chose to have both variables point to the same object in memory. This leads to less memory usage and better string comparison speed down the road. Keep in mind, however, that this is what we call an implementation detail, meaning that it isn't a requirement or a rule in Python. It is something that a certain interpreter in a certain version can choose to implement or not. So you should never rely on it. So here, even though the is operator returned true, in another Python version, or using another Python interpreter, or even using another machine, this operator could have returned false. Thus, whenever your intent is to compare values of objects, such as comparing the values of two strings, always use the equality operator. Okay, so now that the differences are well highlighted and clear, when would we use either one of these operators? Well, personally, I use the equal equal operator in the vast majority of cases. Whenever I want to compare two objects, more often than not, I am interested in comparing their values and not at all whether they are actually the same object or not. Practically speaking, I only use the is operator in two scenarios, either when debugging or when I'm trying to understand how things work in Python as we're doing right now in this video, or, and this is the much more common use case, is whenever I need to perform a comparison with a singleton object such as none. You might have already heard this tip before about using the is operator whenever comparing to none. Let's try to understand why that is using what we've learned in this video. First off, none is what we call a singleton. This means that you can never, under any circumstances, have two different none in your memory. The none object will be created only once and any other variables set to none will actually point to this already existing none object and never create a new copy of it. Knowing this, it makes more sense to use the is operator whenever checking if a variable is none, right? Because a variable will either be the actual non object or not. So no need to use the double equal sign and check for equivalence, which is slightly slower than checking for identity. So it makes sense to use it by convention in this case. But can't we also use the equal equal operator to compare with none? 
Well, PEP8, the official style guide for Python code, states clearly that comparisons to singletons like none should always be done with is or is not, never the equality operators. And this is primarily due to the fact that the equality operator can be overridden in custom classes as I've shown you before. So it's safer, cleaner, and overall more Pythonic to just use the is operator when comparing with a singleton such as none. For your info, true and false are also singletons in Python. However, comparing to true or false can be generally avoided by, for example, replacing if x is true with simply if x. That's it for this video. If you made it this far, I want to congratulate you. You now understand the differences between the is and the equal equal operator better than most Python developers. I hope this knowledge will serve you well in writing some clean Pythonic code. If you enjoyed this video, definitely don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell button. If you want to support the channel, you can already do so with the links in the description below. And as always, don't forget to like if you want to learn even more Python.